वेलकम बैक टू द चैनल सो दिस इज अ पार्ट टू ऑफ आर स्पार्क टर्मिनोलॉजिस वीडियो सीरीज सो इन दिस वीडियो लाइक वी विल बी कवरिंग फ्यू मोर टर्मिनोलॉजिस इन स्पार्क विच आर रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एन इंटरव्यू सो इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियो वी कवर्ड द की वर्ड्स लाइक कोर मेमरी एग्जीक्यूटर सो एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स राइट सो वी हैव वी हैव लाइक क्लोजली वर्क around the uh, spark architecture and uh, the keywords which are there right so now let's discuss few more uh, terminologies so today we are starting with jvm so jvm is nothing but the java virtual machine right so this is really important for an interview point of view so the jvm is a virtual machine so on this virtual machine basically uh, like spark code execute right so here this point you can read spark jobs are executed within the jvm right so the jvm act as the environment where spark code is run and uh, and uh, so basically we know that the jvm is platform independent right so this ensures that uh, the code is platform independent and uh, this point is really important for the mcq point of view also so the number of executor in the spark cluster so let's say if a spark cluster has three node right three node node 1 node 2 node 3 and uh, uh we have like let's say each node contain one executor uh one executor right so the number of jvm would be 3 right number of jvm would be 3 so the number of executor in the spark cluster is equal to the number of jvm in the uh basically spark job right so this we can read uh, what uh, jvm provide so spark is primarily primarily written in scala which runs on, uh, which run on the jvm right and it has the basically the apis for the languages like uh, java Java, Python, and R, and this we read that Spark jobs uh, are executed within the JVM itself, right? So we know that one of the very important feature of JVM is garbage collection, right? So the uh, so JVM provides the memory management through the uh, garbage collection, and we know for the uh, distributed system uh, or the memory intensive workload, right? Where we are processing the data, the garbage collector become really important for it, right? So the, these are the things which jvm provide and uh, this is how you can answer basically the J jvm keyword right now let's uh, talk about the broadcast variable so the we know right uh, broadcast join so what happen in broadcast join one small file uh, if one small file is there and one large file is there or a data set is there and we want to join them so we prefer a broadcast join right so in the same way we have the broadcast variable so what broadcast variable is broadcast variable are shared variable shared read only so i think this is really important for the mcq point of view so you you get a question on this broadcast variable it is a read only and the accumulator this is the write only right write only shared variable so this difference uh, like we get a lot of time in an uh, uh, interview and uh, in the mcq questions as well so variable Uh, so broadcast variable is what read only variable that are cached on each executor so let's say if i have in a in a cluster basically let's say if i have a 10 executor right so at each on each and every executor basically i will have the variable broadcast variable right so how this help is uh, let's look at that so if we have a lookup table broadcast broadcasting it ensure that the executor has a local copy minimizing the network traffic right so let's say at if we i have this variable at each and every executor so how this help is if i have to do any uh, basically lookup any kind of lookup i will not have any uh, network a uh, traffic right i can straight away go and have a look up on this variable right if it is stored on each and every executor so this is how it help let's uh, see this example so let's say if we have the country look up so us if the we have the like country code as us and the full form is united state and in the same way if i have in and uh, and its full form is basically india and if i have to look up basically this so what i can do is instead of basically having a single variable i can basically uh, uh, broadcast this variable so that i have this at each and every executor right and the size of such kind of variable is al also not huge so it will not impact basically the uh, executor memory right so this is how we write the code spark context dot broadcast so this keyword we use and we write the variable name right and this become uh, available at each and every executor node right 
so i think this we understood and this is how you can explain with this example right now let's talk about the accumulator so this is exactly opposite of uh, broadcast so broadcast we uh, like we uh, learn that it is a read only but here it is a write only shared variable and uh, this is really important let's say if we want to track something right so in that cases uh, this is important basically so let's uh, read this example we can use the accumulator to count the error during the data processing job so let's say if we write the number of lines right and we want to count the uh, number of errors which are occurring in the a job right so that we can achieve basically so using this so this is the syntax so the way we have spa, uh, like broadcast in the same way we have here accumulator and we initialize that with zero and each time we can put basically a number and that will get summed up and at the end of the execution we can print that and uh, we can use this for uh, such kind of situation right for the summation or counting and all those things right in a spark job so th that is how the accumulator help us now let's talk about the lazy evaluation so lazy evaluation is spark defer execution uh, of transformation until an action is called okay now we know that if we write let's say 10000 lines of code and if we do not basically call an action on that particular data frame this transformation will not get executed right so this is what we call it lazy uh, evaluation so the transformations are nothing but lazy evaluation and until and unless we call an action they will not execute and this is really important for the uh, optimization basically right so this is the example i think you can read now let's meet uh, walk you through with this example so we write df dot cas so df dot cas so we are casting an intermediate result in the memory so this is nothing but a transformation this is what transformation if we do not call any action so let's say if we write this as a df cast right we store this in the df cast right and if we do not call any action on df cast variable it will not basically execute right so we will have to call any of the action let's say we call a uh, right count so then only this caching will be performed and uh, we will be able to use this cached information down the line right in the code so this is how, what the lazy evaluation is so until and unless we call an action uh, the transformation will not get executed this phenomenon is nothing but a lazy evaluation basically right now let's talk about the checkpointing so checkpointing is nothing but storing uh, the intermediate data basically at a specified location right so let's read uh, about this checkpointing is a process that save the state of an rdd to stay uh, to stable storage like hdfs and s3 right so let's say if we do uh, transformation and if we want to basically uh, checkpoint that at some location so that we can achieve using the checkpointing uh, uh, mechanism right so so that spark does not need to recompute so if we do the checkpointing uh, the spark will not have to recompute everything uh, we can basically use the checkpointing uh, stage and that we will understand with this example let's read it through first this is particularly useful for the lar large uh, or a long running job right so now let's read this code so what we are doing is we are basically uh, defining the checkpointing location over here and in the same way basically this remains the constant spark con uh, spark dot spark context and here we are uh, defining the function set a uh, checkpoint dir so this is the inbuilt function which is provided by uh, spark and we are providing the path so this is the location where the data will be stored right so what we are doing is we are saying spark context dot text file data dot text so we are reading this data in this data and then we are doing some transformation on top of it and we are we are basically we are basically checkpointing this particular df in this right so this will be like this data will be stored at this location right and after that we can use this checkpoint uh, checkpoint data uh, anywhere right so if uh, if anything happens down the line and if the job fail so basically uh, using this uh, like spark rdd lineage it can basically go and uh, get this data right from this checkpoint in stage right so that will basically reduce the time uh, in processing 
right now let's uh, talk about the cache and persist and i think the last terminology is this only so i think we have covered uh, cache uh, let's talk about little more about uh, persist and cache both and what are the differences between them so the cache and persisting uh, store rdd and data frame in memory right and uh, preventing recomputation of the data in iterative algorithm so i think this is quite simple to understand by caching a data frame spark hold in memory allowing faster access for the repeated action right so let's say uh, okay like we will uh, check this example right so before that let me walk you through uh, with this so the in a cache basically we we don't have the storage level so in a cache and persist we we can store the data at different levels so in a cache we do not have any option so by default the uh, data is stored at memory memory and this so this is the uh, spa, uh, like default storage for the cache and in the persist we have the uh, uh, like a different storage level basically uh, in the memory in the disk memory only disk only uh, all those things are there so that you can check basically in the documentation now let's uh, read about the uh, example so let's say we create a data frame df and we cache it right so we know that cache is a transformation so this will not get executed until and unless we call an action so we called this action df dot count right so this is the first action now the data got like the df got a uh, cached basically right in the cache memory now if we call again the df dot so so it will not go over here right it will straight away go into the cached memory and it will uh, try to fetch the data so that is how the caching help uh, to basically improve the uh, processing of the data so i think yes we have covered all the keyword which i wanted to uh, discuss and um, if you like this content please do like subscribe share the channel let's meet in the next video